Praise the Lord and God bless you and thank you for joining us at this very exciting moment of the program anointing. Apostle Vincent Akosa of Christ Central International Church. Um, we are one church in five places this time, to the glory of God. And um, today we have a great, great man of God, great in terms of impact, great in terms of input and the work that God is using him to do internationally, uh, raising up leaders for the kingdom. Um, this is a man who has an MBA and a master's degree in computer science, computer information uh, science, and also, you know, has a PhD from Indiana, Mishawaka in church planning, church uh, pastoral planning and church management, and has been in ministry for almost 25 years, traveling the world and teaching and making an impact. Currently, he is the executive director of Kingdom Equip Network. He is a, a teacher of the word. He raises leaders for the kingdom, and God uses in many, many ways. He's an author of 12 books, and, but when you see him, he's also very, very down to earth and very self-effacing. Um, I'm tremendously, tremendously blessed to count him as a friend, uh, someone that we bounce ideas on and we pray together as we serve together. Um, I want us, you to join me as we welcome into the studio Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Answer. God bless you, man of God. God bless you, my brother. I know you are on a short trip, and then you made a detour to um, California to join us. And it's always a pleasure to have you. This is not your first time. This is about your second or third time joining us this program. And any time that will come, the words of wisdom and the depth of knowledge that God you know, gives to you has really been a tremendous blessing. So thank you. I want you to greet the TV audience and you know, to say something to greet them. Hi, everyone. We praise God for me having the opportunity to meet you all. I believe that this time in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord is going to be wonderful. I expect that the Holy Spirit will give us insight into the Word of God and encourage us and cause <coughs> us to fulfill our destiny as we pursue this program tonight. Well, God bless you so much. Um, there is, um, and I know that when I speak, I know that I'm speaking for many uh, men and women of God and especially, you know, many Christians. Because we see that the trust and the emphasis these days of the gospel message that is being, you know, given to the people. Let us understand that Jesus spoke when he gave the great uh, commission to the church. That, uh, you know, in Matthew 28, uh, verse 20, that, you know, and we should teach them, commanded us to teach them. That's right. You know, which means we should feed the flock. You know, in, uh, in, in Acts chapter 20, 28, he says the same thing, That's right. you know, about feeding the flock. Um, incidentally, we live in an age and an era that I think maybe uh, you, you know, who have been out and about, you know, in the mission field and travel widely, can attest that many people's faith are being kind of challenged because of the obvious reasons of certain challenges and things like that. But we also know that, you know, we cannot, you know, come out with our own um, ways of pleasing God. We have to stick to Bible prescription. Mm. You know, um, pre pre uh, precisely or principally, the Bible says in, us, in James chapter 2 about faith, you know, um, faith without works. Mm. And I know that you are a man of faith. You are a man who lives by faith and mm. teaches faith. Mm. Um, I want us you to be able to, because these days the dynamic is like more kind of tilted towards how materially, you know, you are blessed. That is how successful or how righteous or how holy you are and things like that. So it is like the emphasis is shifting and people are adopting all kinds of means to get these material acquirements and the attraction and things like that, instead of actually, yes, Abraham believing God and followed him by faith and saw the results. So I just want, it's a broad topic, and I want you to just give your inspired sense concerning this, you know, great topic. Wonderful. Thank you. 
um, the subject of faith, just like love, is one of the most probably misinterpreted and mistaught subjects in the faith. Throughout, it's not only today, and it's not only in, in this part of the world, all over the world, there's been a big problem with the subject of faith. You know, because when you talk, for, for example, just as love, when you say love, every, most people think about um, filio and eros, and all, they don't understand the agape, God kind of love. The same way, when it comes to faith, um, for a very long time, especially since the, the, I would say, what we call the prosperity gospel, the revelation about the new creation realities and all of that came, um, there's been a shift, you know, um, from believing God as a faithful God or you being faithful to God, faith being a continuous faithful relationship with God to believing for something to be done. The emphasis of faith has shifted from a relationship with God to something, getting something from God. So when somebody says he has faith today, many um, in the days of Abraham and all of them that we talked about, uh, it was like, I hold on to God to, for in life and in death through all the situations. I'm still there for God. I'm faithful. I hold on to this God like Job and all of them. But now when we say faith, we say, oh, okay, I want a house. I believe that God will provide. He said, oh, give me a house. Until you give me a house, I don't move. I'm only relating to God only on the premise of what I'm looking for. So the issue, the, the, the different dimensions of this faith that we're talking about, and I think that is the problem we're having with the interpretation of faith. Thank you, because we will be talking more about it. I think another thing that, we you know, as we were talking, that dropped in my spirit is we all know that desperation breeds impatience. Hmm. And many people, like, and I think it is also, and I take it, you know, I, I assume concede my part that I think maybe we have not taught faith that much, or in a way we have maybe play to the sentiments of the people to get a crowd and to please them in some way. It is like maybe throwing a carrot to the people to please mm -hmm. them instead of teaching them the walk aspect. Because we know that the Bible says, you know, uh, Abraham walked, mm -hmm. you know, before the Lord. Enoch walked mm. with the Lord and he was no more. The aspect of faith walk is missing. These days, it is now just like people go with their own issues. It, and I think it's, you'll be able to maybe uh, um, highlight it more when maybe you talk about the name and claim um, movement that came. In. So it kind of made people like, I have to have this thing and claim it. And if to God gives it to me, then God is there. Yeah, that, that's right. Then it shows that I have faith. That I have faith. Good. Now, if we look put the discussion in context as you started with James. Uh, James brought a di different dimension of faith. Uh, he brought out the dimension of um, practicality of our faith in terms of relationships and how the, 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 the problem-solving faith, so let me put it that way. You know, there's, there are different aspects of faith. Paul talked about the shipwrecked faith. He talked about the faith that is strong, that is faith, that is solid. And then you also have this wobbly faith, the, the, the shipwrecked faith. Now, I think that James was bringing the dimension of the, activi the, the practicality of faith. In other words, the relational faith, the faith that uh, blesses your neighbor, that impacts on society, that does something for your neighbor. That was one aspect of it. Then you've talked about the faith where you're looking up to God for some miracle. Then your faith where you're looking, you are, you're working with God, the movement with God. And that is where the, 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 the statement that Paul made to the Corinthians, for the just shall live by faith. by faith. Faith as a lifestyle, which is what he demonstrated in 2 Corinthians 12 and 11, uh, where he listed all the things he went through. And they were, they were not only good things. The, we, 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 we've grown up with a culture which says that faith only gives you all the blessedness and the, one, the niceties of life. But when you look at the faithful saints that are mentioned in, in the book of Hebrews, and you start listing all of them, you see that the scripture even ends by saying, these all pursued God, and yet they did not get what they were looking for, even here on earth. So faith, they, 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 even though they were heroes of faith, hero, faith is not defined by just what you get. 
It's more about how you, the, you end up with God, how firmly you hold on to God in spite of situations. So that, there, are, there, there are different dimensions which we need to now bring across because all along for, for a period now, we have emphasized the fact that, yes, it's true that faith means that if you trust God like Abraham trusted God, even though it wasn't there, name, believing that God will make it happen, believing those things that be not, calling those things that be not as though they were, which is what led to him having Isaac. That is one element. But there was also the element where in the chapter 21 or 22, when he was talking about God asking him to sacrifice Isaac, which is also a test of his faithfulness, you know, that he will still stick on to God, just like Job, whose faithfulness was tested. So I think we need to now begin to discuss, get engaged in that. I, mean. I think uh, the sticking thing from what, you know, you just, you know, and thank you for the profound, you know, um, um, explanation that we're giving. When we look at, we put even Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 under the microscope. Mm -hmm. You know, without faith, no one mm -hmm. <clears throat> can please God. Mm -hmm. And those who come to him must believe that he is and he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. Now we see, let us take it back to Genesis chapter 15 verse 3. Mm -hmm. When Abraham believed in God, he didn't see any visible sign. That's right that Sarah was pregnant. Mm. That was what he was actually asking for. Mm. He didn't see it, but he believed. Mm. You know, he believed because he knows that God cannot fail. Mm. But then there are certain things that did happen. Mm. Because you can see that in the course of the walk, of faith, faithful walk, that Abraham demonstrated towards God. Though he didn't see what he wanted, God rewarded him. Mm. Because he never prayed for money. But then you can see that in Genesis, in chapter 13, verse 2, the Bible says Abraham was very rich. You can see that God blessed him with wealth that preceded mm. the actual need that he had. How do you relate this? Because when we were talking about the faithful, you know, there's many people can tell you, everybody who goes to church will tell you, I have faith. <laughs> I have faith. Because the thing is, if he doesn't have faith, he will not go to church in the first yeah. place. Yeah. So some people even take offense. Mm. When maybe you talk to them about matters of faith, they think maybe they are being second guess or doubted or something like mm. that. How do you explain this vis-a-vis -vis the Abrahamic reality? Which, because, you know, Bible says, you know, Galatians 3.29, we are the seed of Abraham. Yeah. Let me say this. Faith is not an orphan. Faith is not a single child. Faith always, biblically speaking, has twin brothers or siblings. One of the faithful, the, the, the reliable siblings that we know in the case of Abraham is obedience. Good. Faith is always tied to obedience. Now, Apostle Paul got the revelation also that faith is tied to love. See, faith works by love. So, then you talk about Can faith. Can you define, because the thing is, we are giving the Greek scenarios of love. Phileo, storge, eros. Let me say agape you know, love. Agape. Agape you know, love. Uh -huh. The God kind of love. Yeah, yeah. So, you have faith not standing in isolation, but it's activated through love. In other words, let's take it that you be, like, well, that's what James was trying to talk about. That you believe God has blessed you. The manifestation that God has really blessed you is in the ability to sense or feel the way God feels about the, the, the depravity or the, the weakness of your neighbor. So that that thing God is giving to you, he's trusting you to, to be a blessing to your neighbor. So Apostle Paul says, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, he says, blessed be God who comforts us that when we are blessed, we are comforted, we'll be able to comfort those who need to be comforted. So our faith brings the comfort of God to the extent that it manifests through love by blessing others who need to be comforted as well. So the, no faith is an isolation. Now, the new craze or the phase that we are in now, people are looking at faith in isolation. And biblical faith is never, ever in isolation. Faith is in hope. Good. That any faith which is not based on the coming of the Lord Jesus, that's not based on the, the belief in what God has said, he's going to, that's what Hebrews 11 talks about. There is an element of hope. 
hope must be activated through true faith. The God kind of faith will always have a certain hope and expectation. And that is what we call to calling those things that be not as though they were. I think, I think you're taking the wind out of my sin. <laughs> because I was going to go to hope. Okay. You know, um, in working in tandem with faith. Mm. You know, because actually the biblical definition in Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things so forth. Mm. The evidence of things not seen. Mm. Okay. Since you're talking about practicality in faith, mm -hmm. how do you marry it into our current experience? Mm. You know, hope working side by side, uh, faith working side by side with faith, with, with hope, sorry. Faith working side by side with hope. Mm. You know, you being a teacher and someone who, you know, raised leaders and talked to so many people, how do you, because assuming somebody has come here, maybe there's, and everybody who comes to church has urgent pressing issues. Mm. You know, we want it now. People come with this, the mindset of Esau. I want it here and now. Mm. You know, it is this here and now, you know, syndrome yeah. or mindset that has gripped so many people. So if you are not a pastor, we are a prophet who can prophesy and get it here and now, you are not anointed. Yeah. You know, and there are so many people, it's like people are now, you know, out there competing. If you come, I can do this for you. If you come, I can do this for you. But it is not we doing it. Yeah. Let, it let is me. he doing it. Good. You ended right. <laughs> when you say it is he, the problem is that the hope is not in a thing. Good. Neither is it in a system. It's in a person. He. Now... Your knowledge of God, the God you have known, how you've understood him, your encounter with him, your, your experience with him, your, the things that you have, you have known about God. And if you look at Solomon, you look at David, you look at all these great guys who came through the scriptures, their, their faith was activated by the things they had heard their God do in the, in the life of Abraham, in the life of Isaac, and they continued on. So what you know about this person called God, the Lord, the deliverer, Yahweh, the deliverer, the Jews, the Israelites that were following Moses, that, was, that gave them hope that if God was able to save Abraham, brought him from somewhere, Isaac, Jacob, and all of these, the experiences they had been told about them. And Moses told the people of Israel, when you, you go to your, your Canaan, to the new land, make sure that you tell your children and children's children about this God who was a person Yahweh, that we talk about, Elohim, that they spoke about. So the, 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 pro, the issue is that people now are shifting from that God to the agents of that God, maybe a prophet or a symbol, maybe a handkerchief or maybe a, 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 some oil or maybe some particular location. Jesus said something very important when he spoke to the woman of Samaria. He said, the hour comes when the true worshippers worship in, in truth and truth. Then he added that the time will come when men will no longer have to go to Jerusalem or nor go to Samaria. So it's not about location, hope. Hope is in the God who is yesterday, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that we have known from time immemorial. So I think that the, 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 the problem we are having now is that people are talking about faith and, and hoping in other things. They are hoping in maybe, maybe a TV program, a radio pro So this is my moment of deliverance. This is my servant who will bring me my healing. This is the one who will bring my breakthrough. So all their hope is in that personality as a channel, as against God who made that person. Thank you. I think you know, it is very troubling that this misplaced faith and hope in men, you know, is creating a lot of problems. And many people are kind of touching the glory of God unwittingly, mm. you know. Um, I think we'll come back to the subject because the thing is, in James chapter 2, mm -hmm. I think, we, you know, James left, was actually, I believe, this is my, this is how I would theorize it, mm. that I think he was actually commenting, or maybe prophetically, talking to the church mm. about maybe, and we see the obvious dichotomy here, mm. those who prove their faith with works, and those who talk their faith, but they don't walk the faith. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are so many people out there. Mm. You know, it's, 
easier to talk, like we say here in America, talk is cheap, mm -hmm. but to, to walk the walk mm. or to walk the talk. Mm. So we see this because I don't think, you know, you know, how is the justification aspect? Because I think it was, it was a deep topic that James gave us, you know, try to explain to, to the church, mm. you know, faith and, and works. Mm. How applicable is it right now? And I know it is needed. Mm. And I want you to maybe bring, you know, the 21st century, you know, experience, you know, as, I mean, the Bible is always current, you know, to bear as, you know, to the audience, how God still expects, you know, the two to work together, the marriage of faith, faith and works. works. Yeah, thank you. You see, the issue, James, when he was writing this book, you can see he, his objective, one of the objectives was to clarify the difference between truth and falsehood. In all the chapters, he, he, he always came out, he tried to explain the difference in, in between the truth and falsehood in terms of the faith or, or the Christian experience. So you realize that he dealt with uh, faith. He talked about even love, peacemaking, when he goes to chapter 3. He talked about um, uh, the, the different elements of our faith. He, and, and so when he got to chapter 2, he was dealing particularly with the confusion about uh, faith and the relation to, it has with love. Now, he was also not saying that you only, uh, you, it's one or the other. He wasn't saying that it's either you have faith or you have works. He never said yes. so. Uh -huh. He was trying to say that one is not saved by faith alone, just saying, or, or pronoun. But if you want to see true faith, that true faith will be manifest through the deeds that uh, one manifests to his neighbor. I don't think James was saying anything too different from what John the beloved was saying in First John, that the love is of God and that we should love as he has loved us, we should love one another. I think he was just using a different language, the language of faith to express the nature of God. And it's the same way to us today. If we talk about, there are many people who are saying, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm born again, I love the Lord, I, I, I serve God faithfully. But then, if you look at the relationship they have with their husbands, their wives, their kids, and the community, there's always rancor. And he spoke about this rancor in the next chapter. That mm -hmm. the faith, yes, you say you have faith, but you cannot be tolerant with another. You can't be patient. So he wasn't even just talking about giving goods or giving money or giving goodies. He was talking about character, conduct, self-control as a manifestation of faith how we relate to one another, being tolerant, being forbearing. So you see in chapter 3, towards the end, he said that this is the difference between those who have true uh, 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 conduct of love. Then he talks about uh, um, 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 that rather than to be angry and, where the, and to be confusing and all of that, they should rather be merciful to those who provoke us. They should, show, they should be tolerant to those who provoke us and many other things that he shows there as an indication that when we say love or when we say, so when we say faith, we are not just making utterances of confessions that I can do this, I can do that, but then I will do something to bless my neighbor. How do I relate better with my neighbor apart from talking to God? How does my knowledge of God translate to my relationship with my neighbor? And I think that should be the emphasis. It should improve faith. True faith must improve the way we relate to each other and bring God into that situation. In other words, it's not just about giving people some clothes to wear, giving them food to eat, giving them money when they are in need, which is part of it. But beyond that, be the place of God towards other people, for them to know God. That's also very important. Praise the Lord. I know that the subject of faith, we can sit down here, mm -hmm. you know, and exhaust all the time in the year, and I don't think we'll be able to adequately you know, um, address it. Mm. I want to thank you so much. Mm. But then, you know, um, as we wind up, mm. you know, I know that there are people that are listening mm. to you as you are taking your time, mm. you know, with the grace of the teaching gift that God has given to you. Mm. You know, um, there are many that have been gripped by this sense of impatience. Mm. And sometimes, Many are their wisdom, is God with me? Does God care for me? Mm. And all that. Yes, your faith will be challenged. Mm. You know, 
there will be a stretch. We will mm. be touched it. Mm. As, you know, you, we wind up. How do, what do you tell people like that? You know, because for them, this faith without works and all that, you know, they want something that, you know, in, in the practical sense. I'm going through something, and how do I go through looking to God for results and exercise my maximum faith to get what I need? I believe, my brother, that, that I believe that God's word cannot be broken. And God says that, call upon me in the day of trouble, and I'll hear you. I think that the call is an open call. Whoever is troubled should continue calling on the Lord. How the Lord solves your problem, meets your need, it's up to him. He doesn't always have to solve it your way. And so just hold on to the Lord, and once you know that he's hearing you, just be patient, be still, and know that the Lord is God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can you just say a prayer as we wind up? Just say a prayer. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for those that have heard us, even those that will hear us later. We pray that as you hear your word, faith will be activated, that they will have faith in you, that, Lord, every burden that they carry, you yourself will lift the burden. Let them know your peace, which passes all understanding. I pray that you deliver them from evil and lead them not into temptation. Or that there are steps that your peace and your love and your mercy will be their portion. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you so much, Dr. Ansan. We thank you for your time and journey message for you as you travel. I want to thank you so much for tuning and joining us. We know that please, you know, leave it, take this message and let it find rest in your soul and um, walk by faith. And you as God, you know, um, did manifest himself to Abraham and all those, the patriarchs, God will also do the same for you. Amen. Amen. Because it's the same prescription for all of us since the patriarchs. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. Till next week, I'm Apostle Vincent Takosa of Christ International Church.